So let's record this for the rest of the world so people can see it. The guy from uh, actually Ken from Indonesia looked at the last video. He found it useful when we were discussing how you have to understand the bill of materials at a deep level. So that's good feedback. Uh, he's working on it there and he's basically getting production up so that he can make the first sale and then kind of bootstrap the operation there. So it's kind of his position. Um, yeah. But let's let's talk. So, wh where are you at, and how can I help you? What's the, your next step and progress? These guys, by uh, in another three four hours, they are supposed to send me their estimate. If they don't do it, I'll uh, once you review the beer, I'm going to place an order online. In two three days, we should have all the parts. Hopefully, two three days. In the meanwhile, I'll spend time learning the free cat and getting the free cat batch. So I learn that batch. Once I earn the free cat back, that is yeah, I saw that email from you where that free cat back is there, so I'll start doing that today. And yeah, I'm working Sunday. I'm working Sunday, so basically since I was not able to work the other day due to migraine, I'm working Sunday. So I'll try to I don't know how many days it takes to get the batch, but let me start it today. So in the next three hours of these guys, they don't get back with an estimate. Once you review it, I'll place an order online. I should have the parts in three days and I can start work. The aluminium heat sink thing. I need to know how to start a conversation with a local machining company yeah. because I know these folks like yeah, I know what's like CNC milling, injection molding, and all of that. But I'm not from a manufacturing background, so I don't know what they are. I just go to words. So I'll have to start a conversation with somebody locally. I'll take the CAD file there. I'll meet them. Maybe I should start off on that as well. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, great. Uh, do you want to show me the issue on? Uh, let's talk about the log and how you can effectively. Use that. Maybe yes. you want to share your screen. I tried everything right from Internet Explorer to uh, you know uh, Chrome uh, uh, and uh, Chrome Editor Update and Firefox. There are some CSR cross site. I think it's some kind of a uh, security. Okay, I'll open my. Sorry, I'll have to share my screen, right? Yeah, so share your screen, which is at the bottom left of the screen. There and it says share your screen okay. if you're on a I'm computer. So it is more actions. Start live stream, settings, speaker. Martin, how do I share my screen with you? So there's a button at the bottom left. Why don't you take a look at my screen? So you see this, uh, this button? The hand there. icon. Is it? Palm yes. icon, palm icon. Oh, I'm next sorry, to next, to it. next to it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thanks. So that's mine. I'll say share. Yeah, there. You may want to turn me. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yep. Got I'll it. open this. You know, Ashwin log. So. Yeah. So here, uh, I'll say new log entry for it. And D three D. Got to start a working job Thursday. So this uh, today is 19th, Feb 19th, Friday log, Friday test log. Not go through, but you know, just for uh, showing you. I, I get this problem. Okay. Yeah. So what about this cookie stuff? Like, did you clear your cookies and stuff? No, basically what it is saying is, I checked this on Google, there's a, there's a, a link, I don't know that I sent it to you, it says basically how to make, a, uh, you have to allow a certain kind of uh, a string to be allowed in uh, settings on the Chrome browser. I opened Chrome browser, I said allow all cookies from open source psychology, www.opensourcepsychology, and then, but it didn't have that place where you can specify that string. I'll yeah. just open that, please give me a second, which I think I sent it to you an email. That discusses what actually CSRF is. So here, we get sent. Mm -hmm. Is it this one? Uh, I don't know that I sent it to you. I had opened it live yesterday. Yeah, this one. No, not this. This is about uh, the different countries' voltages. So here, when I go to send, I will say uh, CSRF Chrome. That will uh, you know pull up that link. Uh, 
other people have had this same kind of problem. I had that problem for a little bit and then just went away. So I can't tell. What Marcin, what happened was, sorry, in 2019 or 2020, Chrome, uh, Google actually updated Chrome to uh, enforce the security restriction. But I read that in 2020, again, they took it off. So it was Chrome browser version number 84. And when I go to help here, right? You, I, I hope you are seeing my screen. Yes. So when I go to help here at Google Chrome, I get my Google Chrome version, which is 88. 88. Uh -huh. So I think I think the latest version, so it should not be there. What I can do is, uh, there's a website called Stack Overflow, which is basically for technology people to discuss issues. I can go back after our call and check that, unless you have an answer up front. No, if I you know the answer, I can take it from you. Can't. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, in that case, what I'll do is uh, today after the call, I will, you know, parallel along with that free cat thing, I'll look at this issue as well. So that yeah. because all so you're saying, us, you, so you're saying sorry? that Chrome, you're saying that in 2019, Chrome put in the security thing. They took it out later in 2020. Yes, due to uh, due to lockdown. Yeah. Sorry. So now it should be working, but it's still not. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See what you can find out. So let's move rather on. Rather, what is happening is, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, rather, what is happening is, I'm trying to fix the CSRF issue without understanding what CSRF is. Just by typing something on Google, putting in somebody's fix. Maybe I don't know where to spend time first understanding what it is and then put it. But either way, I'll fix it. Not a problem. Along with the free cutting, let me take a look. I thought if you had an answer, I could, you know, but just take it off you. Otherwise, I can look at it. Yeah. But now you can still edit the wiki. So now you're trying to edit the time log. But wiki, oh, the other time. thing with the wiki is watching. Sorry. Go ahead. The other thing with the, with the wiki is, for example, even if I'm not logged in, I'm able to see Ashwin log. For example, this is Ashwin log here. Yeah. But now, if here I say log out, and I still, uh, you know, open Ashwin log here. Yeah. Really, I should not be seeing this page, right? Am I right? No, or, no. You know. That's not how it works. That's just for editing. Everyone, concept for the wiki is that everyone can see it. There is no way to hide pages in a wiki. Everyone sees it. But what you'll see is that you don't have the edit links. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? Makes sense. Because it's an open working collaborative environment. Yeah. So you, okay. So you're good on logged in. So, so here, I want you to do this right now. Um, since you haven't done it yet, do the embed of your BOM spreadsheet. So scroll down a little bit so you see D3D India Bomb. Okay, click on that. Red means that it's a blank page. If you click on it, yeah. you'll be taken to a blank page. So now, using the what I showed you last time about how to embed a Google Doc, can you embed your yeah. your your BOM in there so that it's idea there is it's readily accessible like. We never have to search for stuff. You, Absolutely. I just go to you your log. Go to yeah, okay. I just I look at your log, log and without. Th that's our first line of orientation. Is like if you know somebody who's working on a project, you look at their log. Yeah, it gives visibility right away. But here, I go back to the you know a log here, and okay, I'll close this as well. But then basically, you said just now that. Uh, uh, take the bomb and embed it. This is yeah. the bomb. And now embedding it, you know, uh, how to start a working dog for how so, to embed a bomb. Yeah, embed means you use the HTML, which is under. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's under the file. I tried to three, four days back. Uh, that time it didn't work because I had access issues. This is what I already tried. This uh, how to start a working block thing. I did it three or four days back. Uh, right after the last call, I think, maybe one or two days after that. But I'll give it a shot in front of you again. If, if you have to go that way, we can do that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, it's quick. I just want you to do it so you, you see it working. So go back go back to the D3D yeah. India Bomb wiki page. So yeah. The, yeah. So you don't go to copy, you go to file. Oh, OK. Publish to the web. Publish to web. Right. Embed. 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 Enter publish. And publish. Okay. Yes. Copy the embed code. Yes. And now go go yes. to the wiki page. 
Where are you going to put it? Well, don't worry about that. We're just embedding it on a wiki page called D3D India Bomb. We'll put it here. No, that's that's just to log your hours. That's don't worry about that. I'm sorry. Okay, so, so basically, it's about editing this page and adding here. Correct. Editing this page and adding here. So basically, I'll go to Edit Tab, Edit Sheet. Well, and actually, here I'll stick it. No, no, no. I want you to go to the so the double bracket D3D India Bomb. That's another page. Double. So click out of edit. Sure. Okay. Read it. Click on a red of of that wiki page. I get it, sir. I get it. I get it. So, okay. Click on the red on D3. Okay. Yeah. Missing link. So that's a new page. So now you're gonna embed your your stuff here. Now the only thing is the save it. You'll see it. It didn't. You have to put HTML tags before and after. So that's the only okay. the only thing you gotta do because it doesn't get you those tags. Um, we don't need the body and we need the body and head tags or just the HTML just, tags? Bot, just HTML. So now you'll see that oh, it's embedded, but oh, this is basically an iframe. So it embeds one page within the other. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So summary. Do I put a summary? No, I don't okay. Worry about it. I typically okay. don't. Don't. Uh, Sure. Save I'll page. say show preview. Yeah. Save page. Okay. Uh, it's a little too small. So you got to go back to edit and you got to change the size. So you know how to do that? So you're going to go after the false. Yeah. Where it says right before the iframe headers, false, quote. Uh, at um, the end. Okay, you got to put space height equals, let's say, like 600. So you're actually editing it. No, you have to go. I'm just looking for the syntax. Yeah. So, HTML height attribute. There's a high frame attribute, I think. Canvas, embed. Yeah, okay, so when we say embed, we width and height. Yep, yep. You got to do that. Um, you got to put it right after the falls. Right after the? The falls. You see the false headers false. equals false. Uh, so iframe, yeah, headers is equal to false, put it after that, yeah. Yeah, after the quotation mark. Yeah. yeah. But you want to make it like 600 uh, by 900. Uh, width is like 900. I'm sorry, 900. 900 yeah. Height could be like 500. So it's Panther and Tapage almost. Yeah. Super views. There you go. Yeah. That well, by you, Ching. That's yeah. better. Much yeah. better. So save it. Save changes. Yeah. I typically don't go to preview because when I save it, I see the preview right there. Um, okay. But the thing is, like, only thing that's missing right now, you always want to have an edit link below. So if you're collaborating with others, they can contribute. So insert an edit link by taking simply the, the URL. Permissions. Here you take the URL which starts with docs.google.com. Yep. Okay. Copy that. And then mm -hmm. do a bracket URL space edit. So go back to your page, your wiki page. So now you're navigating between the wiki and Google Docs. So go to your wiki page with your BOM. Uh huh. Oh, this one, right? Yeah. Edit it again. Give me it. And I go to edit. Yeah. And then underneath it, after the HTML. Yeah. Yeah. Return, return. Do a double bracket, and the uh -huh. URL. No, not carrot. Just the bracket. Which is no, not that's. But the is okay. mm. No, below right. that. Mm. So, yeah. So, so yeah, bracket, uh, not double bracket, single bracket. Paste, paste it. Uh, you gotta do your um, your link before the edit. So the link and then space edit. Yeah. Link space edit is equal to true. 
No, I'll edit. No, I'll just edit. <laughs> you can put edit equals true, but edit is enough. Um, this is wiki syntax. It's saying that you're gonna see the edit with a hyperlink. Oh yeah, but click uh, click save. Okay, this is a wiki syntax. So this way you give permission to edit the document to anybody. Yeah. As long as you've set so permissions in the document itself to editable. If they're not editable, then people won't be able to edit it. But go, go back. Yeah, save this. A much and quick question. So basically, when I put edit, uh, so there are two things here. One thing is this page itself must be editable, the actual wiki page, and the embedded document has to be editable. So permissions are to be given only at one place like this, or basically even in the document here. It's within the document. Right now, you can share. If someone has the link, they can, whatever the permissions you set in it. The wiki, everyone will be able to see this on the wiki as long as you're enabling sharing within Google. But if you lock down the document, they'll just see a blank. Like basically, you need permission to view this doc. But the general concept here is you're you're basically what you've just done is just embedded a Google Doc into the wiki. The idea is that you can embed all kinds of content into the wiki, which means it's very powerful. Because for example, you can create a bunch of iframes in the wiki as a as a platform where you have like we can have our video conference in one one window and so forth. You know what I mean? So you can have yeah, you can yeah. create like control panels and different usable formatted things right in a wiki as publicly editable. You don't have to have like a web programmer that has to do that for you. You can pretty much have this ready editing functionality within the wiki to put anything into the page that you want. And that's really powerful for collaborative design because uh, anyone can add value to that. Uh, it's, it's basically crowd editable and stuff like that. So it's a uh, wiki is a powerful tool. But save Perfect. changes. So I'll say save changes. Yeah. And what happens? So now if I, if within on my my log, I, I go to your log on my computer. I should be able to click go to the D C D India bomb. Should be able to click edit, and I should be able to access it. And yeah, I can. And what I'm seeing is that your sharing options are. Anyone on the internet with a link can comment. Uh, where, is, where is my uh, sharing options? Because there's a document. I'll have to set permissions at two levels, right? One is at the document level and one is at the wiki level, is it? Oh, well, wiki, anybody, level. even if I log in, can, uh, sorry to ask you or interrupt no, no. you, but uh, suppose the guy sitting in Singapore for, or Indonesia, for example, he logs into the uh, wiki. Can he edit, for example, any of my pages like Ashwin underscore log? Yeah, it's a open open editable okay if, okay 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 so, as long okay, as he logs right. in okay okay so everybody has all the permissions when it comes to the wiki except for the main pages yes except where as an administrator i can lock certain pages where you just can't edit them anymore but that's only for critical pages sure like sure. say organizational info or the main page those are locked down so that people just don't go about randomly changing it. Sure, perfect. So it's like an open wiki, perfect. So permissions yeah. have to be granted at document level, whereas wiki level permissions is, uh, it's everybody has the same set of permissions except for the admin pages, certain critical pages. Exactly. Okay, perfect, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So here, at the document level, where do I specify that? Uh, That's in the upper people? right under share. It's on a share. Yep. Exactly. Um, and then you the go. You can and restriction. Um, editors can change permissions here. Viewers can see the options. I will repeat yeah. this. We'll go back. See, the bottom part is you can change the, the part at the bottom. You see where it says change at the bottom? Yeah. You could, you could now change that. Anyone with a link can edit. Edit. Yeah. 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 Done. Yeah. So, so now example, the now, yeah. yeah. So they like, for example, if they if you got your people on your side collaborating with you, they can just put in new links for their their products if you want. If you want to do that for BOMs. Yeah. 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 How do I pull up an earlier version in this? 
go to file and go to history. Much as it's okay to ask you some silly questions. Yeah. Thank you. So your file file history, that's perfectly version, version okay. history is a very powerful thing. You you can go back to earlier versions. Okay. Perfect. So since we're on the topic of getting familiar with how to navigate all of this, let's do one more thing. Yeah. Which is uh, I'll share my screen with you now. I'll stop sharing mine. Yeah. So if you go so if you look at my page, I so this is your BOM. But for example, if we have the latest version of the 3D printer, look at this. This is, for example, the latest 3D printer. And what this is, is actually, you know, there's this whole table for development. And here's a little side box that talks about some key aspects of the printer, right? So these are all templates, actually. So when I Go into edit. Um, well, this is done by putting in like a small word or a few words, and this whole thing, this development template, let's just focus on that for now. You can embed this entire development template for a new project. So, the way it works in hardware is that literally any new project is like a fork that they call a fork in software. Uh, oh, like a fork, yeah, okay. So actually, like this is D3D, this is uh, the latest version of the Pro, which is 2007. And you can actually s see that because if you, there's a genealogy page, so there's D3D or for example, 3D printer genealogy, so you can see all the past versions, okay? So for example, D3D Pro 2007 is back here. There's been newer work since then, actually, which you can see here, but you can see all that has happened. Now, since you're doing an official version, actually Ken in Indonesia, since he's building um, more printers and actually John is Blackley in New York is building more printers. They should actually put new versions of 3D printers built by OSE since those are people that we're working with closely. So it's kind of like core development. So it's already some distributed development happening. But here what we should do, um, we should do a D3D Pro. Uh, and this is really the way we name it, let's just call it 21.02. So this is... Um, major change is going to major version history number and uh, minor change is going to minor version history number. Well, we don't have the... Within the actual a name, you don't see major versus minor versions, but we're just keeping every track of every single project and basically copying what was in there that's relevant for oh. your version. So let's let's talk about let's say that this is um, D3D build in India by. Roman, can you please explain this uh, version numbers major yeah. dot minor? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 that's that. that's good. We we gotta basically this is some very basics like how do you operate here. Um, I'm just going to do this thing as a redirect thing. I'm going to take that to your log. Um, so I, I redirect that Ashwin to Ashwin log. Uh, but basically what's... I'll get back to your question here. But here, sure. like now, if you click on Ashwin, you're going to be taken to your log because I redirected it to Ashwin log. Okay. But okay, so how do you name the, the numbers that name, name yeah. the versions? It's actually a p wiki page on that. You can take a look at it. It's later. It's called taxonomy. Because in software we do it differently. So. Yeah, yeah. So there's a page called wiki taxonomy or taxonomy. But to explain it simply, right? You do the what's called uh, what was it called in in software? It's called well, major a, minor versions. For example, if you have uh, five versions of uh, Windows, for example, Win three, Win four, Win five, 
and within four you got a uh, 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 minor addition to four because users report some bug fixes bugs for example or that time you call it 4.2 yeah uh, enhancement 4.2 and uh, bug means enhancement 4.2 or uh, 4.23 so 0, 0.03 is bug fixes yeah. point 0.2 is enhancement version 4 is a major upgrade from version 3 so yeah yeah we do that a little bit different here since we can't really it doesn't really work to do that here as well yeah because yeah. In some way, you can actually say that the GitHub process is centralized in a certain way that's different than hardware. See, because in hardware, if you're going to build it, that's a distinct version from what anyone else has built. Because you're going to, for example, have a different bill of materials. Like you have different sourcing, you have different ways you build it because of your local conditions. So you pretty much have to like treat it like a fork, which is what we're doing here. We're just saying, okay, this is D3D Pro because this is D3D Pro. That's the machine name. But the version is simply when we're doing it. Simply we're saying this is 2021 and it's February, right? So since you're yeah. the only guy, um, well, not exactly because you can actually have, we can have other ones like D3D. You can get into the sub versions like D3D Pro version, say 21.02 point 18 which is February 18, 18 which is today if there's other people working on it that's a useful thing to do but the key is that you gotta start a new one for each version so that you don't confuse uh, the different versions because you can't simply say compile for this yeah. you can't do that in software, you can, therefore, you can have a central repository and on GitHub, and anyone can fork it, can, can actually compile it. But in hardware, only you pretty much can compile it right now. Because you're the only guy in India working on it. And the other people, say, in the United States, they wouldn't really be developing your machine because they're not building it. So the equivalent of make, or no, compile, is build Unix. yeah so the equivalent of compile for hardware compile in software would be build in hardware and then execute or run in software would be the equivalent of use use it in hardware but with those kinds of metaphors it kind of explains why you can't really do the exact process as github does that kind of make sense like in other words like the summary of it is you, you have to treat every project as a fork because you need to document, because because each build is gonna be unique. It's not gonna be the same because the compiler is not the same. The compiler, but correct? Context, right, so yeah. basically when you say V21.02, it means 2021 February, basically. Yeah, so basically this so is telling me, yeah. How will, for example, the grand secretary of Silent Singapore in Asia, please explain me. How will he know where I'm pulling up my, you know, if I'm building 20, V21.02, how will he know from which, on what I'm basing it? On what I'm basing my build of materials? For yeah. example, he asked me to it's on D3D Pro 20.07. Yeah, it's actually this and that. So actually, we should put notes on here build by Ashwin based on D3D Pro basically D3D Pro V2007 we should say that here that's a good point because that's what we're basing this on see the other ones Pro 2 yeah. and Pro 3 which are up oh, above that okay. yeah it is actually yeah. Pro 3 and Pro 2 um yeah that's was universal see this one um see here i say aka d3d pro 2 so pro 2 is actually 2004 and pro 3 is 2007 but we make a clear distinction between pro pro 2 and pro 3 because pro is eight inch bed the pro two is the 12 inch bed and the pro three is the 18 inch bed 
right but they're very similar they're they're just pretty much different size and then there's some differences but they're largely similar that's why i'm just keeping them under the 3d printer genealogy for d3d pro 3 and then there's other stuff there's like mega okay what is that about that's like three feet wide like it's it's a larger larger size with not the eight millimeter but 25 millimeter rods so anyway there's mega there's there's another fork that we're doing here because basically the thing is that we can change the axis size frame size everything here but we want to kind of keep it under this genealogy here for 3d printers because they're all based on a very similar construction set and there'll be impossible to just keep like one github repository where you're tracking all these versions you can't you got to keep them separate so okay so with that said let's go to D does that make sense or and one more question i'm sorry yeah so basically you're saying ashwin you base your uh, printer based on uh, d3d pro 2007 yeah so that means the guy who built it uh he written 2020 july was it starting or ending of development starting, starting. Development. yes actually we do it by starting because you don't know when it's going to finish like when you're going to finish it up so the only way you can do it is that's a good question actually because yeah. a very sensible way to to label it is simply by whenever you started it because you have no idea when you're going to end right so yeah that's only just and once he's done it how do you set it in stone because today 21072 i will base it on 2007 tomorrow somebody somewhere in for example uh, nepal for example in march he may base it on the same thing or yes. you know if there is an upgrade yes how do you set it in stone that it's over nobody can go ahead and you know modify 2007 uh modify 2007 well here so this is 2007 the only way you can lock it, we sh we should kind of lock it by going into like I should probably protect this page, you know. So yeah, because today I build it tomorrow a month later he will change it twenty or seven the guy who's built it for example the Indonesia guy and later guy in Nepal for example in March he may up, uh, build the latest one and mine in the Nepal version will be different. Yeah, just a theoretical. No, yeah. it's true. It's true. Like actually, once we that that's a good point. We're saying that once we are see because this thing has already been built like i'm using it right i built it so i should go protect and we shouldn't like nobody should be editing this so first of all allow like only administrators to, to change this um okay. and then see but the thing is like for example 2007 3d cad like all these pages should really be locked down now i'm not gonna go in there and lock down every single page so the way it should work um the most important thing is like who's the maintainer of that like if you're working on d3d pro v2102 which is okay. the india version only the collaborators mm -hmm. should be editing that page like Absolutely. If, if you're an Absolutely. outsider like here you know just like you know why don't we lock this down well, like, if somebody goes to D3D 2007 build instructions, the only people that know anything about the build instructions there are the people that worked on it or, you know, are closely allied people. So that's why, like, in practice, like, I'm not going to protect that. The guys know that they, um, they, uh, they are the effective maintainers. So it's kind of loose, but it ends up working because... Um, say somebody starts the the nepal version uh they're gonna first of all start like a new version and they're gonna use all the prior work to basically yeah. feed from but they're not gonna be editing it that's just the general protocol like if you haven't built it i guess what i'm saying is gonna be editing it no i'm not saying editing if i'm basing my work today on t3 pro v27 yeah. i built something in a week now the guy who's built 27 he upgrades his thing but you know uh, uh, my work doesn't reflect his work because he's upgraded and somebody in nepal built something based on his latest work so my printer and the nepal printer will be different all i'm yeah. saying is if if the development is closed on 27 somebody has to lock further development on it somebody has to what 
uh, for example, if uh, somebody has uh, done, uh, if uh, we uh, D3D Pro 2007 uh, development has finished, so, uh, there has to be a way to ensure that no further development happens on that version. Yeah, yeah. Well, but see, that's that's true. However, like there's some things you do want to keep editing. Like, like for example, we haven't, you know, the red means that nobody put anything there yet. But things like data collection, you can still be editing that because you see that, oh, we find that this really worked well and the first maintenance issue happened like two years after we started using it. So you still want to sure. be able to actually record some things and change some things, but only the maintainers of that project, the effective maintainers would be able to do that. And because they're maintaining it, like if somebody else edits it, you know, they either mm -hmm. accept it or not, you know? Okay. So that's, that's more or less how it works. Um, Machin, please give me a quick minute. My battery is very low. Okay. Uh, charges in the neighboring room. I just plug it in. Yeah. One minute. Sorry for that. Yeah. So we did that. We just went through the naming. So we're start. Well, we're, but the thing is, so we want to start your your version here. Okay. So what do you do? Well, um, there's a, a, a template, and it's called. If you learn about uh, templates, development template. Yeah, there's a development template. Mm -hmm. You might have read a little bit about it. So you can actually start with a page called uh, development template. Uh, there's a page that describes like all this taxonomy stuff, like how do we do the keep track of the development. First we had it in Google Docs, but it's actually very convenient. Don't Machin, use it. could you please, the links that you're opening, could you please post it and paste it in chat? Last time around after the call, I was not able to pull them off the chat and also so I'll copy paste locally. What a link you open, can you please post it in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, um, that's the development template. Um, okay. For example, this Pro Twenty O Seven. Um, so you can read about that. What what this is all about? And basically, I put a note up here. We went to this template development. This development template is just a template. So uh, to teach you about templates, the way they work. Uh, so we're trying to start this page, and we don't want to like type in everything, like all that organizational development process. And there, we use a template to go step by step through all the steps required. And there's a template. And that template, you simply call it up by saying the double, the curly bracket thing. Yeah. Um, you, we're going to call up the dev plus template. Okay, it's actually called dev plus. And then we're going to pipe, which is that, you know, pipe, which is the vertical. Yeah. We're going to pipe a parameter into it. And that parameter is going to be D3D Pro V. 21.02 so that's the parameter we piped into it and look what's going to happen um now i'm going to do before i do this so, so that's that's how i call up the template to create the development template but i'm going to do a little subst here that's another thing but this, that means substitute that means when I, after i hit save 
it's gonna uh, basically show the entire syntax of it. So watch. I saved it. Look at this. It, it created you a page that says D3D Pro V 2001 and all the different development steps. That's what happened when I just used that one line. Oh, I get the whole other development template on my page, which I can edit and reuse most of what is already there. That's right. You can copy stuff from before. So this is already, this is your page. This is your baby here. So what you want to do, first of all, is put that on your log. Like, we go Sure, there. I know that right now. If I have access. Is it like, there's not embedding, so I'll have to copy paste. Yeah, just copy and paste. So uh, if you're still looking at my screen, I'm just going to put that Again. link, which is just D3D Pro V 2102. That's you. You know that. Uh, so that that will call like the basically the common name is D3D India. You know, it's your first Indian build, so it's a unique name, D3 India. Um, so that's on your log, okay? So you can access it very easily. But now you've got all this, you can access this from your log, and you can start filling in all the different things. I'm sorry. Say this one as well. Yeah. Yeah. This well, URL as well can you put in the chat. It's on your log already. I'll put it in the chat. Oh, 21 is not bad. 20? Oh, yeah. No, what is that? Yeah. 21.02. Awesome. Okay. But see, like, yeah, good. Now, I want to show you one thing. Edit. If you edit this, look at this. It folded out the actual syntax that creates that whole thing. So, uh, <laughs> so basically what happened, like, remember the subs? I put in there, that means it, it just spells out everything here. So you don't see the, if I hit edit, or if I had save before without using that subst colon syntax, then it would just give me this one line here. And I wouldn't be able to edit any of the sub content. Like if I want to change some of this here, you know. So for example, for short description, um, you know, if you click edit, you'll probably be able to see that short description right there. You change that with whatever caption you want. So you can actually kind of make sense through this template as far as how... Uh, so there's basically a wiki, wiki language. Yeah, that's wiki language, wiki language there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but you can kind of figure it out. The, the most important thing is you've got, like for any content here, you've got... Uh, the actual work product link and then you've got the description so for example if you want to know how do you do like 3d cad there's some notes on that you know 3d cad design so it tells you how do you do that uh, so it's just some notes like so for someone looking at this template if you want to know what say industry standards are you can find the description here in this other link um, can find more about it um, but the critical thing is basically what we have set up here is a is a template which tracks all the development steps I mean this is just basic uh, product and product development this is just basic uh, technique industry standards somewhat technique you basically have to have a design you have to have a bill of materials you have to have build instructions and you want to have uh, feedback or data collection and stuff like that so it's kind of ref this is this reflects a somewhat general development methodology for products sure. where it's kind of um, appropriated for what OSE does like obviously you're gonna have to have 3d CAD if you are designing some things you might include the calculations you might have the electronics design if it has electronics you might have the wiring have, was 3D CAD because CAD itself is a 3d model uh, specified in a file right with dimensions and all that. That's yeah, what I understand. That's 3D CAD, oh, okay. yeah. So for example, if you click 3D CAD, it'll tell you how do you, how do you do this? Well, see the two OSC FreeCAD instructionals, learn about FreeCAD and upload your your parts in such and such way. So that's gonna be FreeCAD files. Now um, now FreeCAD, so that's open source software, but how do you work together with people who don't have FreeCAD? Well the people who don't use FreeCAD, who use some other proprietary software, they can always export into file formats like STEP. That's a uni universal yeah. kind of a... Have you ever heard of STEP file, S-T-E-P? Yeah, I heard of STEP files. Yeah, oh. STEP files, 
step file. There are actually two formats when I did that FreeCAD. I'm sorry, in the email I said AutoCAD, I was yeah. referring to FreeCAD. I've got FreeCAD installed. Import export options. Even the Tinkercad has multiple import options. Three three options, I think. A dot yep. OBJ, dot, uh, yeah. Yep. And step files are useful, but, but anyway, you can learn more about CAD. Uh, so, so anyway, yeah. this is, uh, here you go. Now you can start filling this stuff in. So, for example, you did the BOM, right? Yeah. So, so I'm going to link to BOM. Link to BOM. Yeah, so... I fill this. Let me fill this. Unless, of course, you're filling it. So, Ashwin. Long. So, so the BOM, we already have that in um, the India BOM. So, for... for yeah. Right. So, what you can do... Since you already have that page uh, under D3D Pro, we can simply just redirect to that existing page already. So you do this number redirect to your page, your India Bomb page. So, so what that did? So now you have the BOM here, yeah. right? If you click on it, where's it going to go? Take it to the spreadsheet. It's going to, it's going to go to your. Um, this is where it took me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So now the spread is accessible both from my log and from the actual, you know, development template of uh, 2107. 2102, sorry. Yeah. 2102, yeah, since we're here. Or we should just go D3D. So if we do D3D, we should do a simple redirect. So, like, it should be very easy for you to find it. Like, if you, if you want to learn about D3D India, let's call it, that's a, you know, colloquial way to say it. It's hard to remember D3D Pro V2102, so just say D3D India, right? Um, well, let's create that and say... Machan, uh, please excuse me. Uh, yeah. India is a big country. Suppose you get somebody from Bangalore tomorrow, you know, you may just want to... Say it again? India is a big country. You may <laughs> get, get somebody to work for OIC tomorrow independently from another state, for example. So if it's it true. Uh, yeah. It's true, but then we would call since since you're the first guy, you want to keep it that, and then the next guy will call D three D Bangalore, okay. or or do you want to change it? Let's stick to twenty one zero seven if that is okay. Twenty one two. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, twenty one zero two. I'm sorry about that. Sure. Doesn't hurt us to have that <clears throat> this, so I can you know if I forget what the name is, I can get there anyway. Yeah. But you see that you see what happened now you've got this link it's blue you know there's something there and then you might actually sure. go into the percentage like the percentage done what what percentage do you think you're done for the bom maybe like 75 percent like until you refine everything what, what would you estimate is your state of completion of the bill of materials uh, the bom uh, almost 100 percent submitted for review so Okay, you, you got 99%? Okay. Yeah. See, so it shows up there. Right. Oh, okay, percentage of completion. Okay, percentage means, if you don't mind, can we, okay, at the central point, can we say percentage of completion so it becomes more descriptive for everybody doing development? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Sure, you can change it right there. So if you don't like it, you can change anything there. See, I just go to here. Uh, you see, yes. in the, I just, you, there was the percent. Well, I changed it to percent completion. So now you go, percent completion. I'll check Martin if there is some tool, I mean, this is more of a low priority thing. If there's some tool that makes wiki editing easy, you're actually getting into the you know actual wiki language kind of thing, which is more of working with characters. At raw text level, we're working there. If there's some kind of a rich editor that actually works with the wiki on top of this, some kind of a Chrome extension, that will make life easier. I just check if that is possible. It's a vague thought. Yeah, it, it definitely is going to be possible. We tried it like a few years ago, um, but then it wasn't the functionality in there was kind of so bad that we just went back to the text because it just confused things. But maybe it's better right now. You can look into it if you like. But um, yeah, so that's, you know, there's things that can always be improved. So we can always keep our eyes out for new tools. Like you mentioned, this very interesting platform for doc making documentation. Let's just talk about that for a second. Because um, um, what was it called? Do you remember? 
of the uh, XVL work instruction suite. This is pretty impressive. So um, I was looking at this and for you to be able to get the function, like it's a dedicated platform from what I understand. So you, you just give it the CAD file and it helps you do like build instructions in 3D. That is very cool. So um, unfortunately, we don't have any direct open source software for it. But as I mentioned, like if we could get somebody to program such functionality into FreeCAD, it does exist already. Like for example, in FreeCAD, you can do exploded part animations. So that's part of the functionality that this thing has and and improving the capacity within Free, FreeCAD, which you can just uh, basically program in Python. Uh, that's definitely a call out for anybody who wants to get involved in this work, you know. But um, an effective way to do instructionals, that's, uh, you know, that's something to figure out how to do a really good workflow. Right now we can do basic uh, part explosions. We can do simply copy and paste screenshots for like linear procedures. We can make diagrams like exploded part diagrams, fabrication drawings in FreeCAD, all kinds of different things. You can actually animate things a little bit in FreeCAD. So there's a lot of different capacity, but you know, to make it streamline more over time would definitely be good. Martin, just a side point. I mean, basically the interactive 3D instructions seem most intuitive because these toy makers like Engine know they're there to sell their toys. Yeah. So there are research, what is the most appropriate way to get children to actually buy their product or build their product. Yeah. So that interactive is the best Click on X button, put the spot. Maybe there is a fastest way because they are already researched because they are to sell their stuff. So the KitKat kind of a thing, the equal is the interactive 3D uh, work instruction presentation. The work instructions can come as PDF, can come as Excel, can come as 3D, can come in 2D or video. But uh, D3D, uh, the sorry. The 3D instructions interactive seem the most uh, uh, natural or the most uh, intuitive because these toy companies, even Lego has done it with AutoCAD. They tried it with Lego uh, with AutoCAD for uh, Lego Mindstorms. Yeah. Interactive 3D instructions because they have to send that tool at the end of it. They have research that okay, when we do it like this, people can build the fastest. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly right. I mean, right now the only thing you can do is you can take the CAD file and open it up in FreeCAD and you can basically hide everything, explode things and move it around. I mean, you can do that, but it's not, it doesn't give you the instructions. So I think, for, I mean, what, what do you suggest for the easiest way to get there? Because I think, How much do you estimate the Python effort as I can do that if that is not too long? To do what? Because I'll have to learn. You said uh, somebody can program Python into FreeCAD and actually yeah. get it working. How much of effort do you see is that? How much is the effort? The effort, I mean, depends how good you well, want it. You know, you could probably have a simple prototype in like one week of work. If you want to make it really good, you, I, mean, you you gonna, I mean, you're going to take just like any software project, it's going to take some time, right? Yeah. Um, so like probably like in 40 hours, someone, someone could do like, I mean, what's the, what, okay, from what you know about, say, Lego Mindstorms, like how does it help you do it? It, it basically, and what does it let you do that's, that's really useful in your opinion? Whatever it does, it, uh, it lets you build and pro program robots and uh, they have worked with AutoCAD to actually develop, uh, you know, interactive instruction software. So Just how like do you, engine okay. So what's the critical thing for interactive instruction software? Say you start with a CAD file. So we, you know, we have CAD files that are pretty much ready. Uh, how do you get complete build instructions from a CAD file? What kind of a, uh, how do we make it easy to translate that CAD model into full build instructionals? I mean, sorry, yeah. So basically it is like, take the first part. And then uh, uh, it shows you the first part, and then you click a button. It says, "Take the next part, put it yeah. on the top." Yeah. Well, uh, we can. I mean, to program like a very basic thing up in FreeCAD like that, a week could easily do that. Basically, what you could do is you can add buttons at the top. So you say you open up your CAD file and you have your instructionals module, and then you can pre-program it very easily to say, "Okay, press button." And it'll move these things into shape like they would be an assemble, uh, like you would actually assemble that in real life. That's not a hard thing to do at all. That you can program up pretty readily. 
you know let me take a look at this much and i have to learn python for that or i'll see if i can hire a programmer locally i'll find out how yeah, to do yeah, yeah. i mean actually we've done some work for it so uh one of our guys, he did the OSC Workbenches platform where we pretty much have the instructionals for how to do that, where you're adding buttons. Like it was basically for how do you design things within FreeCAD to help you actually design things like, say, our 3D printer. So what you, the idea there is, concept for any machine is, okay, make a part. And it, just by clicking that button, It'll put you that part or a set of parts into the working document. It would have some basic logic, like it knows where to put the parts and how they go together. But that kind of capacity we have pretty much documented in the OSC Workbenches platform. I actually want to show you that one. So Can you see from the yeah. chat now or later? I'll copy all these links first because after the after the call, the chat disappears. Last time yeah. I contributed to access the chat links, unfortunately. But if you if you notice, like in uh, the video, the actually video where I uploaded the video, I put in all the links under the video actually, so you can do that. Under so okay, that's excellent. Yeah, under the video. always start part of the video. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. do I'll that. Um, uh, before you hang up, right? No, I'm not hanging up. I'm, sorry, I'm not hanging up. Yeah, please go. Right, I'm right. not hanging up. But I'm... Right, but you can, yeah, feel free to paste them all. So for, look at that link, FreeCAD Workbenches. We do have that. Workbenches, it is called, is it? Okay, the buttons are called. And Machin, where are these videos going, our interactions? Uh, on my page, I think only the first video was there, is it? Or the yeah, second there is interaction? That. All the videos are there. Uh, so if you go to. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put a short link to. I'm gonna do Ashlyn log here. So, um, yeah, if you look at your log, the first two videos are there. So, uh, basically, like under your log, you wanna put everything there so you can go back from the very beginning. You can basically study your entire progress. Like, if you missed out on, on, the instructionals for what we did today you can just watch it i'll, I'll upload the video to february 18. Um, perfect i get it the yeah. links for, uh what i see on saturday february 13th is notes with links under video under the video you know under the video i see nothing i'm sorry but i don't see anything under the video it is just a video there right but is you have something? to go you have to go click on it and go into youtube so if you click on youtube you can see it in the video description on youtube I'm Holy sorry, uh, I understand. It's okay, so let me uh, share my screen with you for how you navigate it. So, I got that. Um, Go to YouTube and click on the description and get the links. Perfect. Sorry. Well, look at that. Like if you, um, you look at my screen, look at people. Uh, you know, it's useful to do this because a bunch of people commented. You know, you're still using video on play. Very pertinent topic. So this is Ken Makunga from Indonesia. He said, I just began sourcing parts locally to build a 12-inch bed D3D Pro, only to find I can't get exact same parts. So he has to substitute parts, and he mentioned that that was useful because he got some insights. Um, Machin, by the way, uh, one of the, uh, uh, since you raised this about the parts, I spoke to one of the guys here who runs a company called Maker Global. Yeah. They, they build and sell 3D printers, and they give 3D printing services. I asked about the same PSI thing, which I said initially, still has 50,000 PSI, why don't you, because I had been to their office to see their 3D printers. I asked him, why don't you print your own screws? He said, I don't know whether he's right or wrong, I'm just telling you what he said. He said, over time, their 3D printer starts wobbling. Uh, it starts, you know, uh, you know, uh, shaking or something. So even the quality of existing screws is not good is what you're saying. I don't buy into that uh, argument, but I'm just telling you. I had a chat with them that won't you 3d print your own screws because that's much easier than trying to because this guy indonesia guy says he i can't source some parts of it some bolts and nuts are also parts so you're saying i asked him yeah go ahead the psi thing the, i told him steel has 50,000 psi and uh, why don't you use plastic we don't need so much for your small 3d printers he said over time our parts our 3d printers they wobble or they shake so that is why we are still using Maybe he was just giving me an answer to keep me, you know, uh, give me an answer for the sake of it for that moment. I don't know. Uh, did, did he say that he's actually printing, uh, 3D printing plastic screws? No. 
asked him why don't you do that he said we go for sales growth you know these people pick up standard of the shelf things and their job is to sell 3d printer you know the kind of the level of discussion we had they won't have the psl level discussion they don't have no this is called r and d they're going to be yeah. doing r and d they're selling stuff right so that's the explanation, but the thing is, they're doing engineering to a basic level, not R&D at all, never, never at that level, not PSA level stuff, no. Yeah, exactly. But once you know, have some insights and you start understanding this, you can see like, wow, this is possible and that is possible. And, and that's where it becomes really interesting because then you start innovating and changing the world. That's how innovation happens. Yeah. Yes. So your next steps are to uh, do the free cap. Um, Get, yeah, get the, I think you should make the blocks, like if you read the discussion on a, on a machine block, um, yeah. so the, the email I sent you about that, the, yeah, they, this you should be able to just give that, give that information to the, to whoever's doing the machining. And, and get it CNC machining or a welder? I'm sorry, I don't know the term. Must I go to a CNC machine or a welder for that with the aluminum thing? No, for the aluminum, that's just a CNC. That's just small. You don't have to have CNC. They can do it pretty much manually too. But they have to have a way to measure accurately. So basically, digital readout is probably sure. the minimum that's needed. They can also CNC it too. But that uh, when I got Brad here in the U.S. to do that, he's also from Missouri. Uh, it was five hundred bucks for a hundred of them, so five bucks a pop. How many would I need? One of them? Or? You just need I'll, one. I'll check the bottom. <laughs> I got a hundred at one. a time. So, um, yeah, yeah. So one one of those blocks. That's all you need. It's probably going to be a you know. It's like if they're just making one, it might be expensive for just one. But once you get rolling, you know. It'll, the price will come down because you you'll make more of them. <clears throat> you know, if you have them make one, like have them make a few of them, because it's probably gonna be not much difference between like one and five or something, whatever. So you'll have more for future machines. Yeah. What else do we want to cover today? Or so today I'll get back to them. If by twelve or two, there is one more three D machining shop. I'm sorry, three D printer server here. The second guy he gave, he said we sell different kinds of 3D printers. We got a different component list. Do you want to look at this? Do you want to build this? Is what he told me. I'll send you that uh, WhatsApp chat. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's not going to help us in any way because what you're building is D3D Pro 2007. So that and this, he said it doesn't have our specific parts. So the first guy he said will get back today. If it doesn't yeah. get back by 12, once you approve the list, once you approve the list, I'll make an online order. Yeah. And then you'll probably get feedback like, well, I don't have exactly this, but I have this. But this is where you, I think, uh, what I would suggest, go back to our document, which was the admissible parts list, which I'm putting in a chat. It Continue that thing. Yeah, yeah. Continue it. So for example, like, you might not have the same steel we have here. It might be like we have uh, one eighth inch, but for example, for the steel, it's. If you're online for a second, please. Sir. I'll open web.whatsapp.com on my computer and show you. It sort of scans the QR code from here. What's up, Pip? Okay, scan the code. Done. So now, here I'll go to this guy. He is our Techno Lexus. Can I email Machana you on WhatsApp or must I uh, um, ask for the email? No, uh, I don't have WhatsApp installed right now. Um, email it. <clears throat> okay, this guy says spotted. What is this actually? These are pictures, I think one, two, three, four. So what I can do is. Uh, 
forward to say can I email it? Download all, correct. Perfect. And now the document I'll email it. I'll put on the desktop first. This guy goes to the desktop and here extract all to okay. So that guy comes through. We'll rename him F2 and say Techno Lexus. Techno Lexus. Any FIS. Then I will say send to compressed folder Techno Lexus. Gmail leave page open this let me see if they sent more on an additional message I got us four images in this specs book so it's got a total part list will be there what is this then maybe it makes sense to have as well Okay, I'll say download desktop. I'll send you both attachments a little better. All access. Ready. Data provider. So what he's done is he's showed me what is existing printer he has. He said I could take them and actually build or assemble the 3D printer that he assembles. So here is his part list just as an FYI, not an FYA, FYI. So I am sending you that. Mm -hmm. What's the question? No, uh, what I'm saying is, I spoke to one company here called Technolexis for mm -hmm. the parts that we need. He said, I don't have the parts that you need, but we build uh, 3D printers and I've got components for the ones that we build. So I am sending it to you as an for your information, not for your attention. Okay. Yeah. 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 Also, so like, for whatever. Your information, not for your attention. So post that kind of stuff on your log because that's all, you know, so that you can. I mean, maybe you can learn to like use your logs so you can organize all the stuff that because you're going to get into a lot of information management, right? So try to post it in your logs so that everyone has access to it if we're collaborating. And that way, yeah. uh, like the general practice is uh, don't email me the info, put it on your log and then email me the link because that then sure. it's not stuck in my mailbox. It's going to be public. Sure. Machan, do you get notification whenever I put something on the log or basically you suggest that uh, if I send you an email, it's not going to disturb you with no, a train of thought or something? No, you know, I people don't, are in a train of thought, suddenly they say an email, they get distracted. Yeah. You're busy no, just, I, I keep looking at people's logs when I know that they're working actively on things, so you can just post it on your log. Okay. You, okay, fine. You, uh, it's not, so my question is, do you get a notification that when somebody posts or basically you know, I don't. So an email is fine for important things. Otherwise, yeah. keep everything on the log. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But I read initially that logs are supposed to be very short. So basically, what are if I, you know, well, I, there's no harm in adding additional things. Yeah, they they the link. You should just put a link on your log. You don't want to put like a wall of text. But if you put a link, you can put that wall of text in that link as long as you can still see on your log. You organize everything clearly. Because you see how my log looks? Um, I'll share that. Martin log. Martin log. I mean, I got a ton of stuff on my log, but all it is is links because, you know, if I write out about something, like the, the, the extensive content might be elsewhere, so I don't... So you can still parse my log to what I was doing. Like, I basically could go Control-F, find, 
and say I worked on the open source inverter, you know, sometime. But Bachchan, if I want to post links to the work that I do and they're all my documents, will they be some kind of a my folder or do I put it with a general name? For example, you're working on, you know, uh, marketing SMEs, for example, I'm yeah. saying that. And it does slash wiki slash marketing SMEs. For me, is it like slash Ashwin or, you know? No, no, you feel free to add to any page. Like when you, if there's a page that exists already and it's a relevant, mm -hmm like marketing SMEs, you know, that's a gen general concept, like who are some people who know about marketing? If you've got more SMEs, basically uh, subject matter experts, right, that do marketing, feel free to use that page. Otherwise you can, you can create a page for yourself. You can just go, oh, Ashwin's useful notes on marketing, whatever. Uh, okay. it's, it's like, it's really free form. As long as, uh, see, because the wiki is searchable, so yeah. it's basically a database and the concept is once you have all that stuff in the database then you can start making pages that organize that so you have two levels one is the level of content and then two is the level of organization so Perfect. don't worry about putting a bunch of content up there do it um don't worry about oh i don't know how to title it properly or whatever no, just do it and the the organizational part can come later but you have to have the material first uh, yeah, absolutely yeah so don't even worry about the wording or the language initially just keep yeah, putting in things just, can be defined after review yeah 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 it's like publish early and often that's that's the philosophy just get stuff up there and we organize it as time goes on but sometimes what stops the effort is overthinking as to format yeah. or as to organize oh, that yeah. overthinking effort yeah 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 don't don't overthink that it, it, like the only way the wiki is going to work is like yeah just get it up there understand that it's supposed to be a a messy piece of chaos that's fine like because i get those kinds of comments all the time your miss your wiki's a mess or whatever okay well go go on there and start organizing it it's, that's fine exactly <laughs> yeah that's what it's supposed to be that's what wikis are and wikipedia you might think oh well wikipedia is so good well they spent 10 million dollars doing that a year or 30 million dollars to edit their wiki right it takes a lot of organization to put that all that structure and quality on top of it so that that process like wikipedia it doesn't happen for free it's a, it, there's a lot of energy behind it um okay because they keep asking for donations all the time because they don't have money yeah 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 okay. yeah government in the service yeah so what I'll do is I'll get back to the free cat thing. In the meanwhile, I'll check up with these guys. And uh, once you review the bomb, if I, if the actual, the what I've tried to do in the bomb is, have I got your part right on my side? I'm not trying to say that is the link I'll go to. But if you think, okay, Ashwin, this is the right part, then I'll actually pull up the, because there are many sites that sometimes import from China, US, and then sell here. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible case. I mean, once I place the order, then they will place their order, get it, and then give it to me after 15 days. And they'll charge me a premium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready for me to go over the entire bill materials or do you still want to work on it a little more? Oh, mine is done. My work is done. Okay. I submitted to you. Okay. And I told you on the email that yesterday before going to bed, I'll finish that work because that was pending. Okay. I initially thought I would start building it locally, waiting on these suppliers, but that didn't happen. So it was essential to complete this task. That way we have some progress at least somewhere. Sounds good. So I'll take a look at all of that. And in the meantime, like in the next few days, just get the FreeCAD badge, just uh, learn FreeCAD at a basic level and go with it. Sure. Uh, but Martin, uh, if you don't mind, I like colors a bit more. So I'll start up with Tinkercad, understand what CAD is, and then go to FreeCAD. Is that okay? Because, you know, a colorful UI makes it. Yeah, yeah, you can Colors do that. Uh, make sure you learn, uh, don't get stuck in the tink Tinkercad thing. That's a useful okay. thing. Um, yeah. You must have a free cat match, not a uh, <laughs> Right, exactly. You need a free cat match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. And start with the free cat thing. You please take your time with the bomb review. In the meanwhile, I know the guy here, he understands the bomb better than me. So he, uh, if he's good, so you don't, you're not stuck for a timeline to actually review it and come back. Okay. So I'll go here. He's working yep. on Saturday also. They work Saturday also. 
So unified place ki order doesn't make sense. It may actually make sense for me to wait for him. Even if he's slightly more expensive than the online market, I'll take from him. He understands the bomb better than me because he understands uh, the screws or the nuts or the specification better than me. So I'll start off with the free cat. I'll push him today. Today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday. Even tomorrow end of the day, he gives me an estimate. For the reason, but I'll just take it from him. Saturday or Monday, I'll pick it up from him. End of matter. We don't really have to go online. We don't have to, you know, put the review ahead of the purchase. Okay. That frees you up for a little more important things, I think. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep keep going at it, and um, we'll talk next week again. One question, if you don't mind. The big yeah. exercise ball behind you is a giant exercise ball. <laughs> yeah. Thing, is it? That's an exercise ball. That's all. Just but, for the but that's a huge one, is it? Or is it one book? Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's big. It's pretty big. It's like three feet. Yeah. If you have one for setting for work, it was a smaller one. You get uh, you get exercise ball seats. On yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I use that as a seat right. sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty good actually. It's pretty good for you. Yep. These days I either stand or I sit on the floor. I don't. Uh, I try not to sit on chairs. Mm. Oh yeah. And I stand or I. Sit. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. And then there's posture chairs, which are. Uh, make you get a better posture too. That's that's pretty good too. I don't have one of those. Should, I'm gonna 3D print one of those in the future, right? But your thing is you get poster braces. You know, bra uh, some kind of a vest which you wear, elastic vest. It ensures that you don't slouch. Makes you sit up like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Poster braces. I, I used to have one of them. I'm going to order them again. Yeah. But actually, ensure I'm sitting like this all the time. I don't end up slouching anymore. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Pay attention to the. To the body. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. So yeah, we'll talk soon, and yeah, good luck on getting those parts and everything. So I'll also look at the workbench thing for the CAD thing once I'm done with the free CAD. Yeah. Thing. Once I'm cross the free CAD batch, then I look at the workbench and goes, I don't know Python. Let me see the extent of work there from my point of view. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at that and see what you think about it. Yeah. I'll be curious to see how how you think how much time it would take. To for somebody to. But Python, does it make sense to actually shoot an email to any of these open source developers and say, hey guys, look, Nat is ready, has done it, why don't you do it? Out of passion, they'll pick it up because once they pick up the exp once they do it, they actually want to create a, pr a proprietary version because that's big money for them. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of people that would be interested in that. So, and it's just a matter of where you put your time. Like, if if you think it's a good idea to shoot off a an email to some people that you think might be interested, that's worth it. I mean, that's that's what we do all the time. We always reach out to people, and it's kind of like part of our marketing, right? It's you also let them know about the project, so that that gets more eyeballs looking at this, and yeah. That's a, that's a because good I thought you got a, on the on OSC wiki you got a list of uh, free uh, CAD softwares. Yeah. I thought I'll pull up the mailing list of each of them, shoot them lattice three and say, guys, can you develop it? Yeah. Because all we're using, though our standard is to use free CAD, just to view CAD files for building instructions, people pick up any of the free tools just for view. Yeah. Though our standard is free CAD. Yeah. So anybody a, develops it's not our problem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's huge opportunities there for more people than that one thing I, you know, we talked about before. That one package, it's a huge opportunity. But once again, it's like for anybody to to get seriously involved in it, they have to put a lot of attention to it. So to find somebody who's aligned and likes it and and do that, that's that's the challenge. That's basically what we're doing is recruiting, right? But yeah, there's going to be people that 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 will be interested by all means. I just uh, throw a stone in the dark if somebody yeah. picks up excellent. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I mean, that's that's the beauty of working open. You, you you throw out a stone there and you find somebody really takes it. And, and it's oh. you get increased momentum. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so I'll post this video up uh, pretty much like right after the, the meeting so you can review any of it if you like and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Martin. Okay. Martin, one last question. Uh, this video is going to show up on my log as well, is it? Well, if I put it in there, I've been doing that. So. Oh, where should I find it rather? That is my question. The Facebook oh, yeah. or the YouTube? Oh, I where see. Should yeah. I find it? YouTube. So the YouTube. Um, so my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, my channel. Because I think I'm putting mask much in there. I don't know. So OSC as a channel. Yeah. Let me check that. Sorry about that. I didn't pick it up yet. That's exactly right. I'm Marchinos, yeah. 
Nothing there. Yeah. I think it's this one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I see a tunnel by your name last time. So perfect. A, Latest from the Yeah, I get that. Uh -huh. This is a place to find videos. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Place to find videos. Cool. All right. Okay. Yep. We'll talk to what you. What I soon. do is the videos are a part of our work as well. I will in when I get access, I'll take the YouTube link and I'll put on my log as well. Excellent. That's it. Yeah. That's uh, the spirit. I will spend on. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. We'll talk. Nice to meet you, Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Have a nice day.